to talk to you all today about something that's really important to me, and I'm sure is important to all of you. I want to talk about humanity today. It's a small subject, I know. <laughs> um, but I don't want you to think about politics, or religion, or law, or any of those things that combine to make our culture. I just want you to think about us, humans, a, a band of apes running around a planet trying to build a civilization. So that's one of the perspectives that I want you to hold in mind. And I want to add some layers of perspective before we actually get to uh, a discussion about humanity. That's actually what I want to do here today. Is I, want to, I don't want you to really tell you anything. I don't want to come up on stage and tell you anything that we, are sh that we should do. I want to open a discussion about ourselves. This is a photo of a man, playing him being one of us. He's the CEO of two companies. Uh, an electric car company called Tesla, which I actually wasn't planning on talking about today, but uh, circumstances have made it such that I should, I think. Earlier this week, they were awarded Car of the Year 2013, which is the first time in the 63-year 60, history of the award that has been awarded to an electric car. And just a few months ago, they announced um, a, a supercharging station network that's going to span the entire continental United States and the lower half of Canada. Uh, and these supercharging stations, you can think of them as like gas stations with solar panels on top. And these solar panels put more energy into the grid than the cars use. So solar, or sorry, electric cars are here. And we have this man and his company to thank for it. Uh, but that's not really what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about a second company called SpaceX, which is a space technologies company, if you hadn't already assumed. Uh, SpaceX recently launched cargo to the International Space Station, which made them the very first private company to do so. So that's cool, but what does that really have to do with humanity? Well, it is his personal, stated ambition to make humans a multi-planetary species. Let me rephrase that for those of you whose brains are still in peace. Okay, he's not just talking about building the technology necessary to visit Mars. He's talking about building the technology necessary to colonize Mars an independent, self-sustaining human civilization on another world, a goal that I assume he intends to accomplish within his lifetime. So even if we're 100 years out from this, or 150 years out from this, we stand at the dawn of a new era. So you might be able to begin to appreciate, I think we need to have a talk. <laughs> <laughs> I want to add one more layer of perspective before I actually get to this, this discussion about humanity. This is a photo taken 16 milliseconds after the world's first nuclear weapons test in 1945. Some of you older people in the audience might actually remember this. So this is the instant that weapons of mass destruction were invented. And I think nukes are worth discussing, because if you look at the historical timeline of all weapons that we've ever developed, from stone spear points, to arrows, to guns, to bombs, to nuclear weapons, it seems that nuclear weapons present a new kind of threat a, a disaster with guns or bombs is a tragic massacre, but, but a nuclear disaster is potentially apocalyptic and potentially an extinction event. The stakes have been raised <laughs> to a new level that we've never seen before, and all of this is happening in the lifetimes of the people in this room. We need to rethink our place on this planet, not as members of nation states or political groups or religious denominations, those all may serve a meaningful purpose to your life, but we must at least recognize that we're all part of the same tribe, we all share the same planet, we're all in this together, we're all human beings. So this conversation I've alluded to for long enough, let's get specific. The conversation I think we need to have consists of two parts. One, what are we doing here? And two, I'll get to that later. <laughs> what are we doing here? Now again, I feel the need to frame this question appropriately. What I'm not asking is for a list of things that we're doing. So, polluting the environment, multiplying like bunnies, mm -hmm. engaging in warfare, or a list of the consequences of human activity is missing the point. I'm also, though, not asking some deep philosophical question about cosmic purpose or meaning. What I'm asking is, what are we currently doing as a collective civilization that is a unified effort 
that all humans are in some way connected to. As a global community of human beings, what are we working towards? What's the plan? Aside from just building a technologically advanced democratic society, that seems to be our operating baseline. But what projects are we currently undertaking to advance that frontier forward? There doesn't seem to be a clear answer to this. We seem to have taken a scattered approach with small investments. But what does a clear answer look like? And when was the last time we had such a clear answer? And that took me back to the 1960s and early 1970s, when the planet we all share was threatened by nuclear war, which was of global importance and interest for reasons too obvious to need discussion. And we were advancing our species into space as Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were stepping foot on the surface of the moon, an accomplishment that most people today would still say is humanity's greatest. There's a wonderful story um, about a tribe in the hills of Papua New Guinea. Uh, they were a tribe that was hardly contacted at all by civilization, so they knew nothing about cities or cars or refrigerators or anything like that, but they knew the names of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins, the often forgotten third member of Apollo 11, who looped around the moon by his lonesome as Neil and Buzz completed their mission. So through the chatter in the hills of Papua, Papua New Guinea, humanity had literally entered its own folklore with that event. Does it bother anyone else that the greatest achievement in human history happened 43 years ago? <laughs> that, that a human milestone has not been advanced in nearly half a century. It doesn't mean we haven't done tremendous things since then. This is the LHC in Geneva, Switzerland, which earlier this year revealed the presence of the Higgs boson, or something very much like it. We don't quite know yet. Um, and what that means is that we've completed the standard model of particle physics, uh, which is a scientific task decades in the making. So this is a scientific accomplishment on a scale greater than the Human Genome Project and is some, reveals something more fundamental about nature. We've sent the biggest, heaviest, and most complicated thing ever to Mars, the Curiosity rover, and that's it over there on the right, uh, compared to some previous rovers that we've sent. I actually had a moment where the future slapped me in the face. I watched the Curiosity rover land on the surface of Mars from my smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> NASA actually does broadcasts of some of their more watched live events, uh, and this is a photo from the actual surface, taken from the underbelly of the Curiosity rover. These are great accomplishments, especially for primates such as ourselves, but they lack a certain something. They didn't permeate culture. They, they occupied at most a cycle or two on the evening news. There are no tribes in the hills of Papua New Guinea talking about the Curiosity rover and Higgs boson, I don't imagine. Now, I'm not here today to suggest a grand unifying project that will matter to everyone on Earth. What I'm here to suggest is that we undertake such a project, and we should decide what that project is. So something like sending humans to Mars by 2030, at a concrete date, like JFK did with the moon landings. A Manhattan Project for Clean Energy or Stem Cell Research. A deep investment in asteroid deflection technology, the search for life in the solar system. Can you imagine the newspaper headlines that day? <laughs> The point is, there are many available options with all the world's problems. So what do I mean by what are we doing here? I mean, what is the project that unites our species? We don't seem to have one, and we should have one, at least one. And we should decide what that project is. Which brings me to my second point, or second question. A different but related question, <laughs> what are we? We call ourselves homo sapiens, which means man wise. And gender issues aside, I think it's a fitting name. We are really smart creatures. We are a mammal that colonized a planet, erected skyscrapers, and flew to the nearest astronomical object. OK, so it's clear that we're wise. But there are many other defining characteristics of our species. For example, our propensity for war and violence is of a scope and scale unrivaled in the animal kingdom. And our, our need for entertainment seems unquenchable. And our environmental destruction is unprecedented. So what's curious to note is that we call ourself, our, ourselves sapiens, not because wisdom is our most defining characteristic, but because it's our most cherished characteristic. It's what we value most. Or is it? 
Okay, the year is 2012, and it is currently possible, totally possible, to be elected to the highest position of power on the entire planet and publicly profess a lack of understanding of evolution and climate change. <laughs> <laughs> about politics and science that does not reflect a culture that values, above all else, wisdom, especially in a democratically elected process. So my challenge to you all, my extended family, is that sapiens is not a label that we can just adorn ourselves with. It's a label that if we choose to define ourselves by, we must earn and live up to. And perhaps a good place to start is by asking who we are and what we're doing here. Thank you very much.